What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Glassless Traveled and another installment of Should You Buy It? My name is Mike Verivi. I am the host of the Glasses Traveled and the founder of the Fox Valley Whiskey Society. Um, the point of Should You Buy It is kind of to give you guys an idea of whether or not it's actually worth it. So I go through my collection of whiskey and kind of pick some stuff out and uh, review it, taste it. I take my notes on it, and I let you guys know whether I think you guys should buy it or not. So <clears throat> today we've got two interesting ones um, and two that are pretty similar and ones that you're going to see uh, pretty regularly on store shelves, especially this year going into next year. Um, it's going to be Ezra Brooks cask strength as well as Rebel cask strength. Now, there are a lot of clubs, there are a lot of stores and a lot of businesses that are picking barrels from Luxco uh, down in Bardstown, Kentucky these two being the predominant two. Now there is a rumor, um, it's rumored that these two particular um, barrels, these two particular whiskeys are sourced from Heaven Hill. Um, no confirmation on that, but that's that's the rumor. Um, Ezra Brooks is a really interesting brand. It was actually started in 1960 by the Hoffman Distilling Company out of Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Hoffman Distilling went out of business in 1970 and in 1993, was purchased by Luxco. Um, <clears throat> it's an absolutely fantastic bourbon. I really, really like the products that they put out. Um, the Ezra Brooks 99, which was a more recent one that they just came out with. Uh, and then I think there was old number seven, old seven um, was another one that they had that everybody was clamoring over. Rebel is another very interesting product. This was actually started, the Rebel Yell brand was actually started in the early uh, part of the 20th century, the 1900s uh, by the Stitzel Weller uh, corporation. And it was uh, distilled all the way up until 1973 um, when it was uh, discontinued and then bought again by um, by Luxco in uh, in Bardstown, Kentucky. Now, Rebel is, is a really interesting one because it has a pretty storied past, um, especially in the political climate that we're in right now. This probably would have uh, uh, caused a lot of people to go to social media and complain and want to boycott uh, because of the name Rebel Yell. Um, initially, it was it was called Rebel Yell. It had a Confederate soldier uh, riding a galloping horse on the front. Um, several decades later, that was taken off. It was just it was dropped down to just Rebel Yell uh, without the Confederate soldier on the galloping horse. And then some years later, after that, it was dropped to just Rebel. Um, <clears throat> they didn't want anybody to think that they were Southern sympathizers, that they were racist or anything like that. So again, in today's political climate, this probably would have been a brand that uh, some people are boycotting, as some people are now boycotting um, Heaven Hill for uh, other reasons, which we will just kind of leave alone because that's not what we're going to be getting into right now. So I've already poured Ezra Brooks cask strength. I have already poured uh, Rebel cask strength. Now I should point out, that um, the Ezra Brooks in particular, this one is actually a barrel pick um, done by Party Time Liquor. I actually found this bottle um, driving to driving from Louisville to uh, Spirits of French Lick Distillery to go visit my friend Alan Bishop. I happened to see a sign outside this little rinky-dink liquor store that said Ezra Brooks barrel pick now in stock. So I slammed on the brakes, I turned around, and I went and I, I sampled it right there in the liquor store. They were kind enough to let me sample it. Um, and I picked up a bottle. I thought it was really fantastic. Um, but again, you know, that was in September. So I'm going to see if my palate has changed at all, see if it, um, see what I think about it now that it's opened up a little bit. The Rebel Cask Strength uh, I picked up at Liquor Barn in, uh, at a Liquor Barn in Louisville with uh, my buddy Dan. Um, he knows, he knows the story of that night, but Suffice it to say, uh, I spent quite a bit of money on my trip to Louisville for Kentucky Bourbon Festival this year. So, so now that we've got that out of the way, I've let these open up. I poured them about 10 minutes ago. Um, let them open up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and sample them, and I'm going to take my notes here. So let's see. We got, we'll just call it EB, and then we'll call it Rebel. We'll just call it R. Let's see. A grain on the nose. Get that aged wood. Now these are both <clears throat> these are both five years old. 
These were both barreled in 2016, bottled this year, 2021. It's a really great brown sugar, brown sugar note on the Ezra Brooks. Now, I don't know if that's common. Again, the Ezra Brooks cask strength, these are barrel picks. So what I get out of this one is going to be different from what you get out of a lot of the other barrel picks that a lot of clubs have done, a lot of stores have done. There's a sweet cinnamon note in there. Toasted sugar. Speechless. Speechless. Palette. Tons of vanilla. Brown sugar. Caramel candies. Like those caramel candies that you would find in your grandparents. Like a like a Werther's, almost like a Werther's caramel candy. So I'm going to put hard caramel candy. I get a little bit of rye spice in the notes, like the actual rye grain. <clears throat> so I'm going to put on the nose. I'm just going to put on the nose just kind of like grain in general because there's a little bit of corn in there. Pecan. Or pecan. But not like praline, precons, precons. Not like pralines, like sugared and, and toasted and brown butter. Brown butter. Almost like a pecan pie. I'm gonna put brown bread butter. Go back for taste. Mm. See, that's one, it's 120 proof, five years old. So it's still young enough that it has that green sweetness, but it's got just enough wood, um, wood influence that you get some of those toasted notes, like some of the toasted, you know, the toasted baking spice and the vanilla and things like that. But it's really, it's that brown sugar and that caramel candy that come through. Some of that brown butter definitely comes through on the palate. And a little bit of, it's like, it's, this one, it's not so much pecan, it's actually praline on the palate. Because of that brown sugar note that's also in there, it kind of comes into play with that, with that pecan, turns into like that, <clears throat> like that roasted, uh, sugary, uh, sugar-coated pecan. All right. The we'll finish. Finish is very mild. Not a lot of ethanol there. There's not a lot of heat there. It's it's relatively sweet. I keep coming back to that brown butter <clears throat> and the brown sugar. I can still taste it in my mouth right now. That vanilla comes through. But honestly, I think what does it for me is it is is that brown butter and that praline, that pecan note that I really, really, really enjoy. You can still, the finish is still going really, really warm down here. So I'm going to say mild vanilla, warm. Praline. Don't get a ton of that brown sugar on the finish. Get a little bit more of like a spice, like a like a peppery spice. So I'm gonna put peppery spice. And you guys know I don't like to rate out of the, um, the hundred point scale because I think it's just completely absurd. The difference between a 92 and a 93 is 
what, you know? So um, <clears throat> simplest scale that I like to put it on is one through five, one being terrible, five being just absolutely fantastic. Um, this is a pretty easy sipping bourbon. Sweet. There is great wood characteristic in there. Um, it's that praline, that pecan, that brown butter, brown sugar note that I get that's just really, really enjoyable. At 120 proof, 60% alcohol, this definitely does not drink. Um, like 60 proof, this definitely drinks a lot softer or what some people would call a lot smoother than 120 proof. Um, <clears throat> if you can find these, whether or not they're distilled by Heaven Hill, um, you know, is, is not my call to make. Um, it does say on the back, distilled and aged in Kentucky, bottled for Lux Road Distillers, Bardstown, Kentucky. So this is not distilled um, or aged at uh, Luxco uh, or Lux Row. Um, this is a sourced product somewhere in Kentucky, but the rumor is, is that it's that both Ezra Brooks cask strength and the Rebel cask strength uh, strength are both currently from Heaven Hill. So um, should you buy it, Ezra Brooks cask strength? Um, I think yes, honestly. I'm going to give that one a solid four. I think that one is absolutely fantastic. Um, like I said, this one was from Party Time Liquor somewhere in southern Indiana on, my, on your way north to Spirits of French Lick in West uh, Baden Springs, Indiana. Uh, couldn't tell you exactly what town because it was just a small town that I happened to drive through. Really, really great pick though. If you are looking for a really good Ezra, Ezra Brooks barrel pick and they still have any left, our friends at the Wheaton Whiskey Club uh, recently picked an Ezra Brooks cask strength um, barrel pick from uh, uh, from Lux Row. Um, my understanding was absolutely fantastic. I have unfortunately not had a chance to try it yet, but um, those guys have, have picked a barrel. Now let's move on to the Rebel cask strength. So again, this one was sitting out for about 10 minutes before the video started. So we're probably at around 20, maybe 22 minutes right now. Nose is very similar. Color is pretty light. Light gold, light amber. Again, this is a five-year... 60% 120 proof. Nose is very, very faint. The biggest thing that I get out of there is, is just the, the grain sweetness. A little bit of wood influence. I'm gonna go in for the for the taste and then I'll come back to the nose. Very different. Very, very different than the than the Ezra Brooks cask, cask strength. So I'm going to go nose, palate. Oh, red hot. Cinnamon red hots. Oh, man. Oh, man, that's fantastic. Finish. Those cinnamon red hots come through right away. It's that beautiful, beautiful spiced cinnamon flavor. There's lots of, of like nutmeg and allspice. Wow, that is crazy. I've never had a like a cin like a red hot cinnamon come through that much. So I'm putting on the palate cinnamon red hot. I wish that note would come through on the nose a little bit. Right now it's just seasoned wood. There's a little bit of an herbal note. Do get a little bit of cinnamon in there. Some cinnamon. Not not a very complex. Not not a very complex nose at all. But the palate.
Cinnamon Red Hot's buttered toast. So that butter note is, I got that brown butter on the Ezra Brooks cask strength <clears throat> buttered toast, which is very indicative of a younger product. You get that toasty, bready sort of flavor. Um, you know, that grain is still is still coming through a little bit. But it's that cinnamon red hot note that really is just the most, most pronounced on this Rebel cask strength. And again, this is Liquor Barn, uh, Liquor Barn number one in Louisville, Kentucky. Finish is, finish is very mild. I'd say... It's almost gone right now. It's a medium short. Medium slash short. Not very warm right here. There's really not a whole lot going on. Get more of that. That toast is coming through. But it's that cinnamon red hot. Take a little swig of water. Because the finish is just gone. Cedar. Cedar wood is coming through. So very faint mineraliness to this. Very, very faint. But not in a bad way. Finish is just very short. So palette, the cinnamon red hot for the for the rebel cask strength. Cinnamon Red Hot's and that buttered toast is by far and away the most prominent note that I get on here. It is, while it's very, very good, um, again, my rating scale, one through five, because I don't like the 100-point scale. This one, for me, I'm going to go I'm gonna go three. Um, the Cinnamon Red Hot note is really fantastic on there. I, I really do enjoy it. The finish is just kind of lacking. There's really not a whole lot going on with the nose. Um that being said, I mean, it, it, it is something that I would definitely look into again. I would look into buying again, um, you know, to try another try another store pick, try another club pick of the Rebel cask strength. Um, enjoyable, but kind of forgettable. The, pardon me, the Ezra Brooks cask strength, on the other hand, really, really enjoyed that one. Uh, vanilla, brown sugar, that... Caramel candy, the praline, the, the pecan note that I got in there. Very sweet, very drinkable. I like bourbons that are a little bit on the sweeter side. I like the fruit notes. I like the caramel candy notes that come through. Um, definitely with the with the Ezra Brooks cask strength, I would pick up another one of these for sure. So when it comes down to it, the Liquor Barn Rebel, i probably pass on this one. But the Party Time Liquor, Southern Indiana, Ezra Brooks cask strength. I would buy this one again and again and again. This was absolutely fantastic. Um, something that I would definitely look into if you have a club, a local club, um, or a local store that has their own picks of these. Definitely something uh, to look into. Both were enjoyable. One of them was just a little bit more forgettable um, than uh, than the other one was. Uh, so everybody, thanks for watching. Happy Wednesday. I uh, hope everybody had a wonderful holiday season. And I hope you have a fantastic 2022 and we will see you guys next week. Cheers.